Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We've got this brand new Compass Box. It's a no name. Compass Box is a blend. We like it. Let's test it. We're going to test it big. Test it! No name style. Compass Box blended style. Number two. <laughs> So years ago, blended whiskeys were the go-to. Every ninety or all of your sales were sure. Blended you're talking sixties, seventies, eighties. Yeah, and up up till then. Okay, nineties yeah. even. There wasn't a lot of single malts out. There. I think it was about the seven into the late seventies, the eighties. Okay. Um, when people started saying, you know, this blend is made up of X, X Y, Z. Z. I want, I want to know. Why. I want to know what why. Yeah, yeah this, let's I go. Agree. I just want to know what you know. Klein Leash is, yes. or you know, Glen Farkless, or right? Any seems, other distillery seems like a lot. A lot. I like a lot of Klein Leash in this blend. This blend. This blend. Mm -hmm. Can I just get some Klein Leash? Right. So, single malt whiskeys really came to fruition and were the boom. Still. Garner a lot of attention. Probably, probably, I, but well, not all the sales. I don't want to say I mean, on percentage because I, a lot. Yeah. On well, then percentage, Johnny, Walk, are, Johnny Walker, yeah. Chivas Regal still has millions a large amount of sales. Millions and millions of liters. And that's what most people think of when they think of a blended whiskey. They think Johnny Walker. Most people, when you think of scotch, they think Johnny Walker. Yeah. John. 15, 17 years ago, John Glazier started Compass Box. He was working for Diageo at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and he wanted to kind of do these uh, craft or the, just these smaller batches of right. blended whiskeys, and they were like, that'll never work. Well, He went on his own way. He's like, well, I'm going to do it. Sure. And he created Compass Box where he could craft these smaller batches of, of whiskeys by blending, and he's doing a marvelous job. Oh. Well, in all facets, not all, not only does he know where these great barrels are, and and he follows his own taste profiles. Speaking of Klein Leash, yeah, he does like Klein. He uses right. Klein Leash in a lot of his right. But I mean, blends. just look at the presentation. Even the dipping of this wax, this gold, and how it matches. And this isn't by accident. Yeah. It matches the gold on the label and the label. I mean, it's just. The production, it's like the production value is perfection. And you're saying, well, that's not the whiskey. That's not the juice in the bottle. It's not. But what it tells you is if that level of, I'm going to say it again, art, craftsmanship, artist, artisanship, perfection art, artisanship. is done with the, the container, with the the wax with the label with the bottle do you think they shortcut do you think he shortcuts the whiskey that's inside he does not no I mean, he wants everything from the whiskey to the to the packaging to the marketing everything just to be well it's more in my well opinion to mirror what the juice is inside the bottle yeah. you get a foretaste of what you're gonna get so this is compass box no name number two um, last year, roughly a year, year and a half ago, maybe longer, mm -hmm. uh, he came out with no name number one. Right. It was in a box. It was black. Which was, as they built it, the peatiest release that Compass Box had done. Mm -hmm. And it was made up of a lot of Ardbeg. Mm -hmm. This one is different. Um, and we're not going to compare them because they're different whiskeys. Right. This one has more in the makeup. It's actually on the bottle. And we'll see where we're at. We're actually going to let this one air for a little bit. We are. Do you want to read that? It's on the... So, uh, oh, no name number two is made up of, and he's got the, wow. the distilleries on here. He does not have the ages. Now, you can email Compass Box, and they'll send you the ages yep. of the whiskeys. If you ask, they will provide. 75.5% uh, of this is Kalila uh, from Refill Sherry Butts. 10.5% is from Talisker, and it's a rejuvenate, from Rejuvenated Hogsheads. 13.5% mm. is from Klein Leash uh, in Rejuvenated Hogsheads. And 0.5% is vatted malt comprised of three Highland single malts finished in new French oak barrels. A uh, lead whiskey maker on this is Jill Boyd. Color is natural. Um, filtration is light, 5 micron filter, no chill filtration. Hmm. So they're just, just to filter out some of the char. 
Um, bottled February of 19, number of bottles 8,802, 48.9%. So what we want to do though is just take a little break. Um, we're going to shut down the mm -hmm. camera. It's about 10, Scott 15 minutes. wants it to open up. Let's let it, because we we're did getting just ready for a live this. show. We did just crack it. We literally just zipped it. And uh, I have 211, by the way. Oh, I have 210. We're going to pause for a second, let this open up. It already smells great. I so wanted to sip it. <laughs> I may sip it and still let it open up. How's that sound? And sure. <laughs> All right. So we'll be back. Of course, it'll be like that for you. All right, we're back. It's actually been uh, 15, almost 20 minutes now. We were talking Star Wars. Yeah. Enough said. Well, not quite. I don't plan on seeing the next installment. You do. We poured this, and I nosed it, and I didn't want to get into it too much, so I wanted it to open up. But there was such a, a, a peaty, fruity, waxiness, citrusness to the nose. Waxy. Yep. Citrus wax. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. With the peat underneath. It's not a peat bomb punching you in the face. The peat's present. Wow. You can't mistake the peat. Citrus fruits, tropical fruits. Just as you say it. <laughs> yeah. Citrus, waxy. Smoky. I mean, you don't get this. This is what I like about peat. You don't pick that up in any other drink that I've ever even... I mean, some mezcal, you get some smoke, but not with this layer of complexity. At least mezcals that I've had so far. I just don't think there's anything quite like a peated whiskey. You know what you said, mezcal? Yeah. And it's almost, I almost know. a little bit yeah. of a mezcal. Right. Yeah, you get a little <laughs> touch. It's the citrus that makes me think of it. a little bit of the, little little of the uh, yeah. almost a smoked cactus yeah. saltiness. <laughs> I know. Underlaying. Yep. Well, it's like deep in there. Which is one of the cool things that they're going to allow them to use barrels that have had tequila. Mm. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, well, anything. You open up the, the, it's like a chef having another spice mm. to use. Ooh. <sighs> you talk while I sip. That overtakes the palate as soon as you take it in. Powdered sugar sweetness, light citrus notes, smoke, Ooh. punch, not necessarily punch of peat, but just punch of flavor. Oh, the finish here. Hmm. Long, tobacco, raw leather. Hmm. Still lingering on. That's the peat finish I like right there. Still there. Ah, oh, boy. That is nice. Um, you know, not. I'm surprised you're saying that's the peat finish you like. That it's not is. really. It's not really the the Ardbeg or the uh, Lafroig peat smack. No. It's Kalila. 75% Kalila. Right. So it's right. it is milder, but it's the peat smack hits you first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you get the peat punch, not even a smack, it's punch. It's a haymaker. That hits you up front. What I love about peated whiskeys in general is the very long, still getting slight hints of it in the finish. Mm -hmm. Up to a minute past. Mm. Oh. I need Pause. to turn that off. So, I, I did sample this when we were in Austin. And when I saw 75% Kalila in refill sherry butts, I expected more sherry coming through. This really, uh, it's refill, so there's not as much in, impact from those sherry butts on the whiskey. But it still, it feels just more like it's ex-bourbon cast. Yeah, I don't pick it's, up sherry. It's really light citrus, vanillas, peat. Peat. But good, yeah. yeah. Maybe the sherry influence will start to show. Okay. It is not showing to me at all currently. And this is okay. also... Um, what is a, the proof? A light color, 48 point. Wow. It has a little bit of a of a kicker on the front. 49, wow. almost 49. Okay. Let me see what yeah. I get in the front. The finish has all those peat, 
well, lengthening finishes that I would expect. And since you said that, let's add mm. some water and maybe that'll bring out some of the sherry. So on the open, I definitely get more of that bourbon oak finish. Drop. Oh, sure. That bourbon oak finish. Well, yeah. The sweetness. A toasted oak. Even hints of peanut. But it's in the finish again where the tobacco, leather, oaky nut. is there. I like this one. I like this one in the finish. The uh, the nose on this, once I, okay, the coin helps on the nose on this, helps concentrate some of that. Every time I put the coin on and come in, that salty, lightly peated citrus nose jumps right out at me. Yeah. Almost a little bit of the, that salty mezcal type nose yeah. as yeah, well. Yeah, the citrus mezcal is an interesting... <laughs> aspect you know well that was um the epicurean the lowland uh, douglas lang that kind of had that same see, but none know. of this is from that region because see the epicurean i usually get like a, a very light cream a cream citrus yeah the nose on this is phenomenal boy in the finish mm. Mm -hmm. mm. The scary part is, I want this, but I know these compass boxes go for some money. Hmm. 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 Mm -mm. I like it. Water help? Well, either way, probably need or a drop of water. Didn't really change too much yet. Maybe some of those sherry notes will start to come out uh, with some time. Yeah, a little oxidization. All right. Um... All right, I'm between a 91 and a 92. Mm, 92. The finish is just so nice. The tobaccos, which is my sweet spot with Pete's. The leathers are good. The mezcali citrusiness is different, yet pleasurable and unique. And then I still get my favorite wrapping blanket PD. Tobacco finish. Yep. 92. That's what I gave it. 92. Huh. Now, cost. <laughs> How much is this? Well, okay. normally I'm pretty good with the cost, right? What? I got to yeah. tell you, I buy this sight unseen. Really? I don't even, but it's, I want to wow. say 120, 130. That's not bad at all. So, yeah. However, um, you haven't seen this in our area. You probably got this. No, this is that's from uh, Auburn. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Did they have another? I don't believe they did. The West Side store, the East Side probably does. I'm sure. Hmm. Yeah, I mean it's, and I think the last no name as well was the same price range, uh, maybe up to one fifty. Hmm. And like I say, I I love Compass Box. I'm buying it. Um, I like how you just buy it. Put it on the well, car. Well, you know, if it was four hundred, I'm gonna <laughs> you know, man, it's hesitate. Bucks. You're gonna you hesitate. Know, Tobias and the Angel. Yes, you did. But yeah, I mean, normal range is very good. Very delicious. I can't delicious. believe the pineapple is right on here. Oh, they got a pineapple on there. Mm. I like it. Scotch, you Scotch guy. Salancha. <laughs> Dummies. Dummies. <laughs>